Welcome to YourGreatBusiness.com. My name is Carlos Sedadia, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use this financial model to plan your next equity financing when your company previously has raised money with convertible debt. So this, this financial model uh, helps you plan the next equity financing, but it also factors in all of the details of that prior convertible debt financing that your company did. So the first thing I want to show you about this model is that there's these tabs down below where you can enter in information about the common stock ownership and any warrants that are outstanding and any options that have been granted and, and the balance of the, um, the stock option pool. And this information flows up here and, and is, is reflected in the pre-money uh, fully diluted equity capitalization of your company. Okay. Um, so it, it pulls in the, the information from these various tabs and, and we see what the fully diluted ownership is right here. So given that this model specifically focuses on the effect of the convertible debt, let's go to the note holder tab and, and look at some of the, the information that you need to enter uh, to make this model work. So you can enter the various investors, their names, um, the principal amount of their debt investment, uh, the date that the uh, initial convertible debt investment close because we need that starting date to calculate the interest. Um, there's the interest rate and it calculates uh, simple interest. Uh, compound interest is not very common so this model uh, uses a simple interest calculation and then it, it, it adds the principal and interest to get to the full um, conversion amount. Um, the model also uh, factors in some, some key convertible debt financing terms. So here's the conversion discount um, that's applicable to the, the prior convertible debt financing. And this is a discount off the price per share in the next equity round. Um, it also uh, takes into account um, the conversion valuation cap if, if that applies to your convertible debt financing. So what this means is the investors say, okay, you can convert my conversion amount into shares of the next equity financing. However, you cannot convert them at a valuation uh, that's greater than than three million dollars. Uh, that's the the amount that we're using in this particular case. So the model then looks at the 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 two price per share calculations. It takes the lower amount, and that's that price is the price that's then applied to the conversion amount to calculate the number of shares. Um, but the main thing that you need to know is you need to get these details right so that the model is working properly. So once we have all of those details in place. We can go back to the summary tab and um, let's work through the, the, the balance of the issues that we need to take care of here. So um, we're assuming that it's a Series A preferred stock uh, financing round. That's the next equity financing round. We're assuming that the proposed closing date of the next equity financing round will be the end of the year. So December 31st, 2015. And this date is important because it's also the date that's used for the debt conversion date. So if we go back to the note holders, um, the date of conversion is also the same date. Um, and that's used then to, to calculate the final interest amount so that we know the final conversion amount that, that will be converted into shares of the next round. So again, the, the, this, this date is very important. Um, and then we get to the, the typical equity financing terms, the pre-money valuation. In this case, we assume it's $4 million and uh, $1 million of new equity um, is being raised. So the Series A preferred stock investors are putting in a million dollars. And based on the resulting post money valuation of $5 million, in this case, the new investors are going to own 20% right here, 20% of the company. So given that they own 20% of the company based on, on these dollar valuation calculations, they also need to receive a number of shares that also equals 20% of the company after the financing has been completed. So this is the, the, the key to the model and this is the secret sauce to the model. Um, and the way we set it up um, is that you need to toggle this share amount and you know raise it and lower it until this percentage here equals the same percentage here. So we need to change this share number here so that this calculation is um, exactly 20%. And so just to, to show you how it works, let's put in 600,000 shares, see what happens. Um, the calculation jumps to 18%. So we're almost there. 
Um, I've done some advanced work here, so I'm going to put in the magic number of 692,898 shares. And when we put that in, we see that the, the two percentages are equal. Okay, so uh, the model's working. It, it has then adjusted all of the calculations here. And what's interesting is in this case, um, even though the valuation cap is lower than the pre-money valuation that we have on the summary page, so if you look here, it's four million. Um, the valuation valuation cap here is three million. Given the conversion discount, the lower price is actually the 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 conversion discount um, column. So that's the price that's used. Um, price per share that's used and applied to the conversion amount to calculate this number of shares. In this uh, example, it's 468,091 shares. That number shows up here, okay? And so all of these share amounts are being used then to, uh, or factored in to getting this share amount to be 20%. So in this case, the new equity shares, the new Series A preferred um, investors get, get this share amount for 20% of the company and the debt the prior debt investors get uh, this share amount for 13 and a half percent of the company. So what this does is it shows you the full equity dilution. So up above are the post money um, shares and the post money fully diluted ownership. And it shows that the, um, the common stockholders, for example, went from owning approximately 87% of the company to 58% of the company after the financing. So they've been diluted um, about 29%. So that's that's um, significant dilution. And that dilution is not just coming from the new equity investment. Um, the Series A preferred stockholders now own 20%. Um, it also comes from the ownership of the, the, the convertible debt holders who now own 13.5% of the company. They also um, hold Series A preferred stock. So collectively, there's been... Um, a change in the ownership of company of almost a third. So 33.5% of the company. So it, one issue that is often overlooked is modeling what the effect of the, of the convertible debt will be on the ultimate ownership of the company after taking into, into account the terms of the new equity financing. So the, the beauty of this model is it allows you to change the valuation numbers, it allows you to change the interest rates and the conversion discount caps so that you can model in advance when you're doing your convertible um, debt financing, um, it will allow you to model what the ultimate effect will be um, on your uh, next equity financing. And it also allows you when you're doing your next equity financing to really understand the effect of the prior convertible debt investment and, and how that will affect the ownership of your company. So um, I hope that this um, model will be helpful to you in, in, in your upcoming uh, financial planning uh, for bringing money into the company. I certainly welcome any comments or questions that you might have. And uh, so please contact me if you, if you have any comments or questions. And I wish you a lot of success with your company and your future um, financing activities. And uh, wish you a lot of success with your great business. Thank you for your time.